Top 9 Extinct Animals That Scientists Want to Bring Back to Life Hey YouTube, you ever want to bring back an extinct animal? No, cause it'll probably eat us all? Eh, that's probably, you know, a good idea. However, around the world, scientists are trying various methods to resurrect certain extinct animals. That's right. Certain. Hopefully not the ones that try to eat us all! However, these are meant with various degrees of success. On this list, we're gonna focus on some of the projects that have the most potential of succeeding. So sit back and relax and enjoy the top 9 extinct animals that scientists want to bring back to life. But before we start all that, why don't you maybe, kind of, sort of, possibly, if you find it in your heart, maybe subscribe to us? Cause I mean, that'd just be really, really cool! Let's begin, shall we? Number 9, Pyrenean Ibex. The Pyrenean Ibex, also called the Bacardo, is certainly a contender for resurrection, mainly because we sort of... Wait a minute, we already did it? When did we do this? Who didn't tell me this? I'm gonna find out who didn't friggin' tell me this. Well, either way, the Bacardo is a type of Spanish goat that used to thrive in the Pyrenees Mountains that border France and Spain went extinct in the year 2000. Once they died out, scientists harvested as much of their genetic information as they possibly could and started a project to clone the animal. I mean, they did succeed in manipulating the DNA of a Bacardo and placing it into the embryo of a surrogate mother, a common goat. A baby was born on July 30th, 2004, but died of respiratory issues minutes later. Boy howdy, I kinda wish I was there for that. <gasps> Everybody look, we have brought back an extinct creature- Oh wait, wait, never mind, never mind. Now, not only was this a momentous achievement in cloning technology, it was also proved that resurrecting extinct animals is a possibility. Though the infant died, the experiment proved that it can be done. The efforts to bring the Bacardo back to life continues, and if these scientists finally succeed in this endeavor, it might just pave the way for other extinct animals to be brought back to life. Number 8. The Pinta Island Galapagos Tortoise In 2012, the last Pinta Island Galapagos Tortoise, the famous Lonesome George, died at 100 years young. Since George was so adored, it just makes sense that people attempt to bring him back, or something relatively like him. With today's technology, that may come sooner than expected. Now, even though the Pinta Island tortoise is extinct, there are still few other Galapagos species around. They may be significant in reviving George's kind. Scientists have found an Ecuadorian island called Isabella, where saddleback Galapagos tortoises, abandoned by sailors over a century ago, still roam. Seventeen of these tortoises had some Pinta DNA, meaning that they might have been Lonesome George's long-lost cousins, or maybe, I don't know, just gene stealers. In 2015, these tortoises were rounded up quite easily, I presume, and brought in for testing, the goal of which was to breed the ones closest to a pinta. Scientists would like to populate Pinta Island with tortoises that are 95% pinta within the next few generations, but in the meantime, a few selected for breeding are roaming about near where George lived. Yes, that's it. Waddle around just like George. Put up this shell just like George. You are George. Yes, you are. I do not know where that came from. I am so sorry. Number 7. Thylakine. Now, the thylakine, also known as a Tasmanian wolf or tiger, is another creature that recently acceded to the extinction list, resulting from human hunting and habitat loss. Because man is the greatest problem in the world. Thank you, man! Believed to be the bane of shepherds everywhere, thylakines were hunted to extinction in the wild by the early 20th century, with the last captive specimen dying in 1936. However, in the early 2000s, a venture began to recover and sequence a thylakine's genetic code from museum specimens found all over the world. The goal of the project was to resurrect the thylakine, but the project came to an end when Michael Archer, the head scientist involved in the venture, left the Australian Museum in 2003. When he left, he began the Lazarus Project, which, contrary to popular belief, doesn't involve sticking someone in the Lazarus pit to keep them back from death like in Batman. However, the intention of continuing his work and bringing the thylacane back from extinction was the goal of that project. Number 6. The Woolly Mammoth Now, the Woolly Mammoth has forever been a candidate for a species scientists would like to return to the land of the living. Although that's... that's maybe not such a good idea, guys. They got the big tusks, they're gonna trample us. Bad idea! However, there are a myriad of reasons why people will not listen to me about how evil woolly mammoths are. The main reason probably has to do something with its DNA, though. It seems that every couple of years, a new corpse is fished out of the Siberian tundra and brought to international attention. This has helped scientists piece together the mammoth's DNA and allow for the complete sequencing of its genome. In layman's terms, we now have the complete blueprint on how to create a woolly mammoth. We just lack the resources. Need a little more wood over here, need a little steel, maybe some grenades? Then we can make it happen. However, the most important reason is probably something you won't expect. 
It's climate change. Dang you, global warming! Why, you might ask? Well, the answer to that lies in the tundra itself, where mammoths used to roam freely. Long ago, the tundra and taiga, a swampy coniferous forest, were a vast grassland. Mammoths ran freely about eating the grass and had an impact on the ecosystem, and may or may not have been operated by Fred Flintstone. However, when they all died out, the tundra arose in their absence, which is now adding the problem of human-caused global climate change. You see, the grasslands were once able to insulate the permafrost, but now that it's gone, the permafrost is melting. It's believed that the tundra can be returned to its former grassland state with the introduction of grazing extinct animals such as the woolly mammoth. Now, efforts to bring back the mammoth are currently on their way. Traits that made the mammoth ever so distinguishable, like its thick, woolly coat, would be artificially bred in the modified embryo of the Asian elephant. Now, although the resulting animals won't be 100% mammoth, they would be the closest thing to a mammoth to live on the planet in thousands of years. Number 5. Cave Lions Oh yeah, let's, uh, let's bring this back. Oh, that sounds safe. Around 12,000 years ago, an ancient species of big cat called the Cave Lion walked the Earth. It got its name not because these animals lived in caves, thank god, but rather because most of their fossils were found in caves. Now obviously because they're featured on this list, they've kinda gone extinct. But as scientists have their way, cave lions could be making a huge resurgence really soon. In August 2015, the carcasses of two newborn cave lion cubs were discovered around the Yuyandinia River in eastern Russia, cleverly named Yunya and Dina. I am positive I just butchered every single word of that. If so, I am so sorry. Legitimately, actually. Now amazingly, the cubs were found perfectly preserved, thanks to being buried in permafrost. Researchers hope that if they can extract living tissue from the cubs, that they'll be able to extract DNA from the tissue and recreate the cave lion. Wait, is that a good idea, though? According to these guys, these guys are much smaller than today's big cats, but still, that's a large meat-eating predator around my general vicinity. I mean, I don't know about you, but I don't want any of these things making a snack of me while I'm on a weekend spelunking trip. Then again, I never leave my house. Okay, point withdrawn. Number four, the MOA. Now, we've all watched Jurassic Park and are familiar with a Velociraptor, right? Well, you're wrong. It's not a Velociraptor. It's a Utah Raptor. Get your facts right. Well, either way, if those creatures and an ostrich had a baby, you'd get a MOA. The MOA went extinct only about 500 years ago. They had so many similarities with dinosaurs, actually, and a preserved moa claw was found and it looked like it belonged to a velociraptor. They were flightless birds and lived only on the southern island of New Zealand, but went extinct due to overhunting and habitat loss. Mannequin! Because of advancements in cloning, scientists have been combining through bones to try and find intact DNA of the moa. As these samples are being found, projects to revive the moa have been cropping up all over the world. The Crown Fudd and Moa Revival Project has begun work on bringing this extinct bird back to life. Beginning with the Eastern Moa, the project has begun the difficult task of sequencing the Moa's genome. Now, once they do have the genome mapped out, they can begin plans on returning the Moa to the Earth. The Genetic Resource Foundation has also gotten involved in attempting to bring back the Moa by raising funds and spreading awareness. Now, if the scientists succeed in bringing back the MOA, please don't take it out of New Zealand. I don't mind if you come up with something more akin to a plant-eating ostrich, but if you somehow make something more of a velociraptor, well, we're all gonna die. Number 3. Arokes. Now, ever wonder why those paintings of cattle on cave walls throughout Europe don't really look like the cows? Aside from, you know, poor artistry, I seriously, I give this a D. How dare you even bring this to me. Well, either way, that's because they aren't cows, but rather O'Rourke's, one of the largest herbivores in European history. Weighing anywhere between 700 kg, or 1500 pounds, and 1500 kg, 3300 pounds. Unfortunately, the last O'Rourke died in 1627, but scientists are actively working to bring the beast back to life. Now, instead of hacking the DNA off some old bones and bringing the O'Rourke back in a lab, scientists are trying more a custom tactics to bring the extinct animal back. While O'Rourke DNA will still be part of the process, it's just being analyzed to find out exactly how it's structured. Once scientists complete the DNA, they'll compare it to, of course, the DNA of modern cattle. From there, the scientists will begin a selective breeding program to actively return dominant genetic traits from generation to generation. Kinda like what they're trying to do with Lonesome George. Now, if the plan works, each succeeding generation will more closely look like that of the O'Rourke. Once they've completed restoring the ancient DNA to a new breed of cattle, the O'Rourke will live again. And since there's so much bigger, think of all the stakes. 
Let's bring it back just to eat it. Number two, the quagga. Quaggas are the extinct cousin of modern day zebras and they do kind of look alike. But instead of being black and white, quaggas are brown and white and have no stripes of the hindquarters. Ugh, another D from me. It's kind of like a kid wanting to draw a zebra but didn't have a right crown and gave up on it halfway through. Pfft, that's stupid. These animals were hunted to extinction by the late 1880s. Oh, and now man's in it. First we got an uncreative kid and now we got man. Yes, man can be a cruel mistress. Either way, the quagga has been a primary candidate for de-extinction. A group called the Quagga Project has been working to restore the quagga to South Africa via selective breeding of zebras. The project is already underway and has garnered relative success. Now, according to Eric Harley, the project's leader, they were able to decrease the number of stripes and have also produced a browner background color in four to five generations of the selected zebras. Now, of course, they won't be 100% quagga, but they're starting to look like the real thing, and I mean, looks are everything, aren't they? These new animals were named Raquaga, and in January 26, six Raquagas exist. The project's goal is to have around 50 of these animals and will then release them into the wild as soon as the numbers increase. And then the lions will pounce. And man, let's be honest here, we just like killing stuff mostly. Number one, dinosaurs. No, no, and another no, I watched every Jurassic Park film, including the bad ones, especially Jurassic Park 3. I mean, my god, I hate that one. And I know what will happen. One minute you're hiding in an outhouse, the next you're T-Rex food. Seriously, why would people even think about this? Now, we still can completely revive dinosaurs and probably never will be able to, simply because DNA doesn't last long on something that is dead. But that doesn't mean someone isn't trying. We might in the long run get something like a real-life Jurassic Park after all, though, hopefully with nothing but wonderful dinosaurs uninterested in eating us. In 2015, a group of scientists successfully fused the embryo of a chicken with a dinosaur snout and palate. Since chickens are descended from dinosaurs, I mean, who knew, the fusion was successful. Oddly enough, the scientists claimed they weren't trying to recreate dinosaurs. They were simply out to study what makes a bird's beak so... beaky. We accidentally put dinosaur DNA on our chicken by accident, you know what I mean. By isolating the proteins needed for beak development, the embryos developed very different bones than those of normal birds. They were short and rounded, more suited to a dinosaur's snout than a chicken's beak, creating what in many ways could have been seen as a modern-day velociraptor. Now, don't expect to see these dino chicken chicken dino things, though, as the embryos were never hatched. And that was our video for today, everybody. Thank you for watching Top 9 Extinct Animals That Scientists Want to Bring Back to Life. Be sure to hit like if you liked the video and hit share to spread the word to your friends. Also, hit the bell icon so you'll be notified every time we upload a new video. And believe me, we kind of upload new and interesting videos all the time. Again, thanks for watching and see you next time.